When you look at some of the things that we're experimenting with globally, there was news that uh, there could be some kind of use of Pfizer vaccine combined with the AstraZeneca, which would help with the global rollout. Is this going to be the narrative going forward, doing everything we can, to, even combining vaccines, to make sure that we vaccinate quickly? Yeah. Good morning from the U.S. Um, certainly, uh, the pressure in the EU has prompted, you know, the conversations between Pfizer and AstraZeneca to consider combining. Um, we already have some preliminary data, at least from here in the United States, on the combination. Uh, when the Pfizer vaccine was approved, um, for example, uh, many of us who were in the AstraZeneca trial, including myself, were instructed that um, we could possibly be unblinded because of the lower at that moment, signal of efficacy. Um, and therefore, we were given the option of being unblinded and receiving the Pfizer vaccine, uh, of which many healthcare workers who were on the front lines of COVID chose to do. Uh, subsequently, we saw great data from Pfizer, and we now know that the efficacy of the vaccine is quite great uh, for severe disease as well as hospitalization. So there probably wasn't a need to receive both. But there is a significant handful, at least in the United States, who've already received both vaccines as part of the trial. And so I would encourage the companies to look at those individuals closely uh, while they're starting a new trial of about 800 participants in the UK uh, announced soon this week. Uh, we also heard actually yesterday that the way that the UK is giving out the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is one dose, ASAP, and then you wait 10 to 12 weeks for the second dose, actually has an 82% efficacy rate, I believe. Are we going to see more countries do it? Could the U.S. be looking at doing the same thing? So right now, the signal from the Biden administration is that that will not be uh, the case. We've heard repeatedly from Dr. Fauci the most important thing was increased di distribution, being able to get the doses in the sequence as prescribed. Uh, importantly, uh, we're concerned about particularly the variants and the pressure placed on the vaccine when an individual has some level of antibody but not level of antibody that's protective. And so concerned just about the dura duration between dose one and dose two, although certainly it will increase supply, that's important. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it, some vaccine is better than no vaccine at all. There's still the, the biologic plausibility that, you know, having a little bit of antibody, then it being exposed to a variant might put pressure on that variant to further evolve. Well, Dr. Farley, I'm scheduled for my second dose here, T minus 10 days and counting. So we're looking forward to that. Tell me about when the age drops. When do we get from the 80s and the 70s to the 60s? And when do we really drop down to a larger audience? Sure. So I think it's all about how quickly the manufacturing, the distribution supply chain can provide us vaccine. And so right now, for example, I am getting calls from my patients. I'm getting calls from others saying, you know, hey, when am I going to be in line for this vaccine? It's particularly troubling when we hear a lot of data emerging where a lot of people are hesitant to get the vaccine. For example, if you look at long-term care facilities where only about 30 to 40 percent of the workers in long-term care facilities across the U.S. have reported receiving the vaccine out of their own choice, not that they weren't offered it, they just were hesitant to do so. So we really need to ensure that people have access, those who want to raise their hand, get access as quickly as possible. And right now, most states across the United States are in Group uh, 1C, which would would indicate that we're in vaccinating those 65 years of age and older. And it did expand in that group to more frontline individuals, frontline healthcare workers and essential workers uh, were included in that group. But many uh, healthy individuals in there, you know, below 65 with maybe, you know, a few comorbidities, not severely ill, are still waiting in line.